Hi, this is Brandon Hetzler, Movement Restoration, and I'm excited to be talking to you guys today about how to fix the squat. Filming from our studios here in Southwest Missouri. Um, if you don't know what SQ means, if you don't know what the deep squat is, then I'd encourage you to go to Functional Movement's website to get more information on the FMS, um, which is a language that we, we're using when it comes to correcting um, what we see in our movement assessments, and for that we use the FMS. We're not going to get into the why of the squat fix today, and when I say squat, I tr don't mean squat strategy, we're specifically targeting the squat on the, deep, on the FMS, the deep squat portion, the overhead squat portion of the FMS. Um, we could have an entire another video on just squat mechanics and uh, um, other iterations of the squat. Um, like I said, this isn't the why. This is going to be more of the how, the exercises, the progressions that we go to to get somebody into the squat and to clean up their deep squat on the FMS. Should be a starting point, shouldn't be a recipe. Um, these exercises are the exercises and the drills that we're currently using. A month ago, this list was different. In a month, this list will be different. If you track me down in a month and ask me what these exercises are, I'd be happy to go over them and show them with you. And the important part of that is it's the, the exercise, the drill you use, isn't necessarily the most important part. In fact, I consider the exercise to be the least important part of our corrective exercise sequence. What you need to understand is, is the result and the impact that that exercise is going, or that drill is going to have on what it is, a strategy that you're trying to fix. When you understand that, then the exercise, you can plug and play. You can put a different intervention in that's going to get you the same result or get you the desired outcome that you want. So you've got to understand movement before you can really get in and start fixing movement. If you want a recipe for this, tons of other websites you can go to to get a recipe. This is just our starting point. So you're probably wondering why I look so excited about the squat. <sighs> Believe it or not, I'm not awesome at squatting. I don't know how tall this chucklehead is, but I'm about 6'6". Six, six. Um, depending on which convenience store I walk into, if you have an old high school basketball program, it might show me at 6'7". Thanks, Coach Ward. Um, but anyway, um, not making the excuse that it's hard to squat for me because I'm tall. I've seen lots of tall people squat. It's just a challenge for me personally. Um, I have some lovely dorsiflexion now that I haven't had my entire life and I've spent lots of time on this. So we're going to go through this. I really am not looking forward to this because as I am in front of the camera for you guys to understand what these drills are, I'm going to be butting up against one of my nemesis and I'm hopeful that I'll come out on top today, um, but we will see. So first thing we like to do like some of the other videos you've seen, we typically start with out with a mobility drill. To fix a squat, there's two that I really like. Um, short half kneeling and hip ripper. You might have heard of the hip ripper in other circles. It's called the tactical frog, I believe. Um, we changed the name, not because we're trying to change the drill. Love the drill, but um, we got tired of people saying, man, it's just ripping my hips, so we just started calling it the hip ripper, and people know intuitively what it was. So, seeing it as a tactical frog, it's not a new drill. It's just a name that we use in-house for the same thing. But short half kneeling, what we're doing here is what we're, what we're doing is we're going to focus on one side, and we're going to focus on the flexion mobility of that one side at a time. Because when it comes to the squat, um, fixing the top of the squat, most people are at least competent at the top of the squat. We might need to do some refinement to actually get them into full hip extension so that this isn't the top of their squat. But we can we at least have a good starting point. We can get them into the top of the squat position. Where the squat typically goes wrong is at the bottom. And where what really is happening is most people don't have a bottom of their squat. This isn't the bottom of the squat. I've seen lots of high school kids come in claiming to have a three, four, 500 pound back squat, and they have an awesome quarter squat. But I have yet to see a kid walk in our door that actually has that through the full range of motion. We've had some Olympic lifters I've seen that have lifted that kind of weight, but whole nother sport, whole nother story. So short half kneeling, we're splitting the pattern, we're splitting the squat pattern, and we're just gonna focus on our flexion components of one side. So what we're looking to do we want this foot 
essentially, we want to set up in our squat stance. Our squat stance is about hip to shoulder width apart, feet straightish. I say straightish because whatever orientation of your acetabulum and your femoral neck angle is, that's your squat stance. If you haven't had an MRI though, you won't know what that is. And with today's healthcare system, not a cost efficient way to do it. There's some drills out there that say, well, if you do some stuff, we can tell you what that is, but it's a good, they're, they're good starting points. I'm not 100% convinced that we actually can find that with those. Some say you can lay down on the table and see the angle of the feet. Again, not convinced. Whole point, feet straightish. If you've got a squat like this, it's called ballet. It's a plie, it's not a squat. If you have to squat like this, well, sorry, quick anatomy lesson, unless you've had some trauma to one side of the pelvis and not the other, your acetabulums are facing the same way. Your femoral neck angles are about the same in the absence of a, a traumatic episode as you were developing. So if left foot's doing one thing, right foot should be doing about the same thing. Ish. We live in the ish. So what we're going to do, we're going to get in our squat stance, and then we're going to drop down into our short half kneeling position. And what we're looking for here, I want this foot flat, knees flexed, and I want my heel on the ground. And what I'm really looking for is I want to get this heel back as far as I can big toe on the ground and start to load into some of that dorsiflexion. Now notice I don't have a lot because I don't have a lot of dorsiflexion. Just getting down here puts me almost to my end range. But I am getting quite a bit of, of some tension in my gastroc soleus complex right now. Important thing here is we're working in and getting through this. Step one, just diaphragmatically breathe here. Then work through some cervical patterns, flexion, extension, rotation, lateral flexion, we can then work on some pushing down. Right now, you notice my hands are on the ground. As soon as I change that and bring my hands off the ground, I now have to be more engaged with the ground through my lower extremities, left leg, right, right shin. I can work on some weight shifts side to side. I don't have much front and back because that dorsiflexion is kind of limited, but I got a little bit. I can work on some, some weight shifting. I can work on some perturbations. And I'm really trying not to hold my breath right now, so Hope you guys understand the pain I'm suffering through with this for you guys. We can work on some perturbations. We can work on some dissociation. Playing into this. Anyway, we're going to go through that whole stabilization sequence that we can run through. If you want to see, I'm going to change the angle just a second. We really want to make sure with this that we're not letting, as we're doing this, we're not letting this front foot that's in short kneeling, we're not letting that collapse. We want our toe, we want our toe. I'm watching the guy that's calling this his toe, seriously, come on, what are you guys doing? We want our knee over the outside of our foot. We don't want our knee wider than our foot, we don't want our knee to collapse inside the foot. If this is bad, outside's bad as well. We want our knee over our foot. We want to angle it towards the outside of the foot to help set up our arch so that we have some good arch positioning here. And we want to maintain the arches as we go through this. And same thing, we can go through that whole progression, flexion, extension, right, left, left, right. I might have just got that wrong, don't know. But anyway, we can go through some weight shifts, we can go through that whole thing. That's short half kneeling. The hip ripper. Knees are wide. Feet, we like having the feet flat. And then we're just going to start working into some flexion. Now, the important part here, notice my lumbar spine. I don't want to look like I'm a dog that's leaving a pile on the neighbor's lawn right here. So I want a nice neutral lumbar spine. This shouldn't change as we're rocking through this. I'm going to start up on my hands as I'm pushing down into the ground. That gives me a little bit of stability to work through this. As I go through this, because I'm not going to squat with a spine orientation, I want to come down and work myself onto my elbows. Same thing, I want to be able to flex and extend that hip, or those hips, without seeing any movement of that lumbar spine. There's a whole progression within the tactical frog that you can go through. Um, Master Strong First Instructor John Ingham uh, with his Flexible Steel series of workshops has a great progression. If you want more information on that, you should go there. 
I'm just going to get into the basic level here where we're just working on getting into some deep flexion and opening up that anterior hip just a little bit. You should be able to breathe with that. You should be able to change your head position. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you can really ruin your day by going through the push-pull series with the kettlebell. Your call. Supine somersault progression, that's what Sam's short for. If you watch me talk about the Jade series of drills, you probably understand that by now, I named this drill by the first person that actually had to do it. His name was Sam. We start out on supine. Feet are squats position, squat stance, so not here, not here. We're looking at squat mechanics from this. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take our hands, we're just gonna cross over and grab right here. This is our starting point. And then all we're going to do is we're gonna roll over to one side, then we're going to roll back to the middle. We can then go to the other side, which microphone's getting in the way. There we go. It's digging into my hip. No big deal. Notice I'm maintaining squat stance the whole time, and we're going to roll back. And we should be able to do this without holding our breath. We should be able to breathe, complete a full breath cycle here. What we're looking for here is in this deep flex position, getting our pelvic floor, getting our diaphragm, getting our abdominal wall to work in conjunction to create a stable cylinder to stabilize our lumbar spine, stabilize our entire spine. We can then go to this position where now we don't have the ability to create torque off of this. You can have your hands together like a goblet squat position. You can have your hands open either or. I'm going to roll over to one side, and really that orientation, that distance between my feet and my knees shouldn't really change. So if I'm here I'm in a goblet squat position, and we're just working back and forth, working on some stability in a deep hip flexed position on a neutral spine. Lots of variations we can go through with that, whole progression we can shoot through. Just don't have time today in today's video. Prone to short quadruped. We're going to start out all the way down here in prone. If you've watched the video on the push-up, same starting position. The difference is we're going to put our feet squat stance. So we're going to go a little bit wider here. What we're going to do, we're now going to push back. This looks just like our prone push back to quadruped drill. But now really what we're focusing on is turn the palms up. And we're going to rock all the way back here. Elbows flat or slightly off the ground, neutral spine. Head neutral or slightly extended. And we're going to be able to complete a breath cycle. And then we're going to come all the way forward. So we're leaving our elbows on the ground for this one. We're not going to go up to quadruped like we did in some previous videos. Maintaining the bottom of our squat posture, breath cycle, back down. Again, in that bottom position. So when I get here, my spine, you shouldn't see any, again, if you look like you're leaving a, li a landmine on the neighbor's yard, you're not doing it right. We want that neutral spine. Short quadruped knee lift. Who put these things up here? Are you just trying to pick all of the things I suck at? Come on. All right, so for this one, what we're going to do, technical difficulty. Oh, there we go. What we're going to do, we're going to get into that same short quadruped position that we were in before didn't scout out a nice padded floor. I think they just went straight on top of concrete with this carpet, but it worked. So we are here. But now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the bottom of our squat and we're going to work on lifting one knee. I don't know if you saw that. That knee came off the ground. Probably distracted by the bicep shake going on. But what we're doing is we're getting in here, lifting up, breath cycle, back down. Same thing on the other side. Yep, that one sucks too. Now, the important thing is, as I'm doing this, I'm still talking to you, which means I'm not holding my breath. Neutral lumbar spine, that one really sucked. Hope it goes better for you guys. But neutral lumbar spine, complete a breath cycle. We don't want to hold the breath, and we should be able to equally do it on both sides. Last one, quadruped or tall nailing to the bottom of the squat. BOS, starting a new thing, stands for bottom of the squat. If it's capital B, capital O, capital S, base of support. Whole new abbreviation. Heard it here first. So, for quadruped or tall to the bottom of the squat, you need a kettlebell. Kettlebell is going to be set up between your knees. If we start from quadruped, squat stance. 
I'm really not looking forward to this one. Squat stance, bell between the knees. You're gonna push back. So I'm pushing into the ground, maintaining neutral spine. I'm gonna sh push back to where now I can unload, put my hands on the bell. I'm now pushing down into the bell, gonna lift the knees. First progression of this is just being able to get here, lift the knees, and complete a breath cycle. From there, what we're going to do, we're gonna lift the knees, complete a breath cycle. We're gonna push on back until our heels get to the ground. We might have to pull the bell with us. Complete a breath cycle here, and then back down to the ground. If I turn sideways, I think what I feel and what you guys see are the same, and I hope it's the same. Lumbar spine, we shouldn't see the landmine position. But what we should have is neutral spine. Spine doesn't change shape. Getting those heels to the ground, coming in, pulling the bell in, and back down. If you really want to add to it, then what we can do is the same thing. Come here. Now bring the bell up, which is a perturbation, which now looks a lot like the bottom of our goblet squat position. From there, we can then stand up. Um, so, I just faced my nemesis on camera. I'm glistening now, or leaking awesomeness, whatever you want to call it. We're just straight up sweating, either or. Um, but that's how we go after the deep squat on the FMS. If you need to do some additional soft tissue work prior to, to kind of take off some of the upper extremity stuff, it's gonna depend on what you see with that. Like I said, this isn't the why, this is some of the how. So, hope you enjoyed. Hope you have way better luck with it than I do and that it's not as mean to you as it was to me. So, enjoy, talk to you later.